Hey guys, let's take a look at an oldie but goodie. This is the H&R Harrington & Richardson 922 chambered in the 22 long rifle and like any 22 revolver you can shoot the shorts and the 22 long ammunition out of it as well and of course your standard velocity or any of your high velocity ammunition works just great in these revolvers. This is the five and a half inch barrel. It has the tall ramped front sight and the very small if non-existent groove in the rear which could be considered a sight <laughs> it's not much of a sight your picture when you would aim this at your target instead of your traditional burying the front blade in the groove like that you're gonna shoot real low with that if you do that what you want to do is raise that blade up about like that above that groove to get the grouping that you want and the accuracy. And the reason for that is because of the virtually non-existent sight picture in the rear and the fact that the front blade is so tall. Now if you'll look at your sight picture in that manner then your accuracy will be really good with this little revolver. Surprisingly good. Especially for a revolver that was made previous to 1941. I'd have to track the serial number for sure to make sure you know when it was produced. But it was definitely before 1941 and these were inexpensive when they were new back then and they're still inexpensive if you can find them. H&R revolvers are extremely popular with collectors even the inexpensive ones because they are just becoming incredibly hard to find and most people will keep them because the original H&R arms company went out of business in 1986 and since then it's been a conglomerate of, of other companies and I'll talk about that here in a second but um, it, this is a double action, single action. It's not just a single action. It has the uh, nice big, what I would consider target grips. Gives you really, really nice uh, grip to hang on to. It's not too fat really for people with small hands. It's surprisingly comfortable to hold. And the thin frame and the small frame that's uh, reminiscent of all the H&R revolvers is uh, really unique but kind of funny looking with the long barrel and the big grip but hey you know ugly chicks need love too you know what I mean and if they shoot well it's even better oh wait we're still talking about the gun right your your trigger release spring is back here which is a little unusual so you know you this is this has been safety checked I take that apart you can see when you cock it, you see where that is. You pull that trigger back, and there's your plunger. Actually, it's your hammer spring. It's kind of unique for the design. Uh, to take this down, since I'm holding the camera with one hand, and I still can never find my tripod, so I've just been doing videos like this, and it seems to work out just fine for me, if it does for you all. What you do is you push this lever in here. Push it and pull the pin out comes out really easily and your entire cylinder drops out much like a single action cowboy style revolver would. Now to put it back in it, it's super easy you slide it back in the, the well here drop your pin in and it locks in place and of course this little notch pops out back into position. The lockup is extremely tight with this little revolver considering it's over 70 years old. You pull the hammer back see how tight that cylinder is. No wiggle, no slop, no nothing. The timing is perfect. A really nice little find from a private seller here in Oklahoma. And why the guy ever got rid of it, I, I'll never know. But uh, I'm glad to have acquired it. So, but uh, Harrington and Richardson uh, started business in 1871 and like I said they went out of business in 1986 and their main manufacturing facility was in Massachusetts. Uh, for a short time they had a facility in Canada. I believe they opened around 1950. And um, But there's pretty much pretty much nothing standing of the original H&R factory in Massachusetts. Um, a new company was formed in 1991 called the H&R 1871. Uh, they continued the, uh, the revolvers and the single shot rifles, shotguns, things like that with the original H&R designs. They did not uh, water down to the, the designs or anything like that. Um, all the assets were sold to 
a company that owned Marlin Firearms. We all know about Marlin. Wonderful company. Sold to them in 2000. And pretty much after that point, uh, they were looking for another another company to buy them out. It was pretty much just to go in between kind of company purchase. So in 2007, uh, the Remington Arms Company acquired all the assets and um, uh, all the old designs, the original H&R and uh, the new H&R 1871 uh, company that they formed in, like I said, the uh, 1991. So anyway, what we see today is the Freedom Group, that's the subsidiaries that own H&R and New England Firearms. It's basically it basically owns Marlin and Remington and H&R and New England Firearms. So these revolvers and their history uh, still lives on. And there's companies that have a lot of money that back them. You know, Marlin, Remington, they've been around for a long time. So they're not dead. So I was, you know, I'm real, real glad to see people that, that love the H&R designs. We're, we're glad to have seen that the, that the company didn't die years and years and years ago like a lot of good manufacturers. So that's a little bit of history uh, behind H&R. They made uh, trench shotguns during World War I. They're, uh, they made a real nice shotgun that doubled as a flare gun in World War I. They made M16s during the Korean War. Uh, they made M14s. Uh, H&R was always popular for their uh, vest, small vest style pocket revolvers. The little uh, snub-nosed revolvers with H&R's popular lightweight thin frame always made for a, a very nice concealable revolver. They've made lots of different variations. I mean there are lots and lots of H&R revolvers out there. And when you see an H&R revolver you know it's an H&R revolver. There is nothing that looks like it. So um, that's really nice. But when I acquired this uh, couple of months ago. The guy had this with it, which I thought was real nice, because this, of course, does not come with this gun, was not in the box 70 plus years ago when this was produced. Evidently, he printed this off the internet, and uh, kind of nice. Gives you a schematic of all the parts to this little gun, and which I thought was quite impressive. And then when you look inside here, there's the prices and all the parts. I mean, your hammer spring and everything. Of course, blah, blah, blah tells you how to load it. Anybody that's been around a revolver doesn't need to know how to load it, you know. Cleaning and oiling, always important. But uh, most of us don't need a lesson in that if we've owned a firearm at all. But now as far as for beginning shooters, this would make a really nice one. I think I might end up giving this to my brother because uh, <laughs> the other day he uh, was a rabid possum at his house. And I've never seen a rabid possum, but I'm glad I've never seen one. He chased that thing down, stepped on it, held it down, and then took a hammer and beat it in the head about 15 times. <laughs> I thought that's one way to do it. But man, you need a, you need some kind of gun. You know, you need something to put one right in the back of its head. So I think I might give him this 22 so he can keep the hammer in the in the cabinet next time. I mean, I'd, I'd have given him $5 just to see that. that. That just sounded funny when he was telling the story. My brother's about six foot five, two 270 pounds, so, you know, I would hate to have been that possum to have a size 14 foot sit on my neck and then beat with a hammer. But anyway, that's a funny story. But anyway, I'll probably end up giving him this so he can take care of the rabid possums and, and uh, you know, vigilante skunks that come around his house and try to attack his his dogs and cats so anyway um, but this is the Harrington or Richardson 922 and like I said they did they did make the the snub version in this and they're a little bit harder to find but if you can find an H&R revolver and it's a fair price I'd say go ahead and purchase it these are not going to be found on the used market very often they're not very expensive they make 22 magnums um, in these type pistols as well, which I'd like to find in the future, but um, highly regarded as, as accurate pistols, well made, and a long respected history in the firearms world. There you go. Be watching for a uh, range video as, as always. 
as soon as this weather warms up I'm going to get out and do a lot of range videos so watch my channel for that and uh, be watching for uh, other reviews